and the risks are all associated pretty much with the food we eat and the exercise we do. Considering 96% of us have got one risk to health, yeah. uh, reduce that. If you've got high cholesterol, eating fresh fruit and vegetables and exercise will reduce that. We need to take our rose coloured glasses off and understand the stuff on the front of the packet is just marketing. Two pieces of fruit, five serves of vegetables and do 10,000 steps a day. Welcome to another System 1357 live workshop, live and real. Today we have Linda Wells, and Linda Wells is going to talk to us about nutrition. Uh, a few years ago, Linda, you can give a bit of your introduction, Linda, when you come on, but a few years ago, Linda started eRaw, which is a company designed around healthy nutrition. Eat Right at Work is actually what eRaw stands for. It'd be good to hear a bit more background on how you came up with the name eRaw in the background. Um, but she's going to talk today about the nutritional um, if I'm correct, informational values and stuff on packets and ingredients as, amongst other things. And it's interesting you say that because I know as parents, it's so confusing when you go shopping looking for kids. I know it was for me because everything said, everything on packets said healthy, you know, like 97% fat free, but it was 100% sugar. And, you know, fighting through all those labels and all that marketing and advertising was a bit of a minefield, to be honest with you, as a parent. You end up working it out. And then I found out one day there was just as much sugar in fruit juice that you give the kids as there was in Coca-Cola. And I went, oh, wow, I didn't know that. And here we are piling this stuff into our kids. So I guess we all know it, but to know and understand it is another story. So I'm literally looking forward to hear how you bring in these years of experience now that you're a speaker and you're a trainer and you're, you've even picked up work now with the United Nations out of Geneva, which is, which is a really good, a really good you know, I guess, acknowledgement and validation of just what you do know. And I'm so looking forward to this. So Linda, give us your take on eRaw and how you started in the background. Yeah, thanks, Scotty. Uh, hello, everybody. So eRaw, exercise right at work is another part that the E can be. So eat right at work and exercise right at work. I've been a workplace trainer for more than a decade on healthy eating. And it started when I was a national franchise manager for a large hotel group. And we were all in a workshop and the presenter split the workshop into four and made us go and stand in a part of the room that we had the special skills, you know, finance, um, customer engagement, et cetera. And one of the special skills was um, being healthy, fit and healthy. Everybody, there's 98 people in the room, everybody went to the finance or the customer engagement or uh, research data analysis or whatever. And two of us stood in fit and healthy. And then they, then he said, change that to um, what, what is your least, um, what, are, what are you least good at? And everybody went and stood in the fit and healthy. And so when we all sat back down again, I thought I'm sitting next to the CEO and the owner of this big, great big uh, uh, hotel company group. And I said to him, do you think that's good for our business? And he said, no, I don't, Linda. And I said, I want to make a change. I want to get people to start you know blah 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 and so he said stay working with us and do that in the background and um, we introduced three o'clock green smoothies so instead of your sugary drink or your snack at three o'clock it was a green smoothie and it was really funny actually Scotty because when we would hand out green smoothies people would pick them up like this like it had poisonous ingredients in it whereas they'll drink something with poisonous ingredients and be happy so uh, green smoothies are a thing now uh, but back in 2009 they were a very scary thing so that's how it all started awesome so i might get started because this is only half an hour um so We've said who I am, so I'll move on. So there is a problem, and it's not just a problem in Australia. It's a problem in New Zealand, a problem, as Scotty was mentioning, I'm doing some work with um, United Nations, and they're based in Geneva, but the people that were on the session recently, they were in multiple countries. So there is a problem globally, and the status quo for most companies is that we have increased our rate of obesity. We are eating junk food processed food, sugary drinks, et cetera. And we, uh, we're just continuing to do it. So now we have this extremely rising obesity rate. Um, Australia's got 67% of people obese. New Zealand's got 62% of people obese. 
by 2025, we're going to nail it. We're going to be 75% obese. So that's a problem. And it creates these underlying health issues. The health issues in Australia that we have, according to the National Health Survey, 96% uh, of Australians have one risk to their health and 75% of Australians have multiple risks to their health. And the risks are all associated pretty much with the food we eat and the exercise we do. So high cholesterol, high blood pressure, high BMI, excess weight, lack of eating fruit and vegetables. The recommended amount is two pieces of fruit and five serves of vegetables. We have somebody on uh, today who's already nailed that goal um, So of the two fruits. So it's not hard to do. But then in some respects, it is hard to understand what five servings of vegetables are. I've had that question asked multiple times. We're physically inactive. In fact, uh, recently I read an article, the headline was sitting is the new smoking. And since COVID's hit and we're all working from home, uh, we are far more sedentary in just the last year than what we were previously. Alcohol use and uh, tobacco and vaping. So Eros dream or goal is to change the world and I'm not going to be able to do it on my own. So I want you to help me. Imagine if we had hospitals and they were empty, like empty. And there were doctors, nurses, um, uh, people on reception, um, orderlies, all just sitting out the back, uh, playing chess, eating organic strawberries, filing their nails, listening to a podcast or something. Imagine that. This is not what it is. In fact, we've got, I think, four politicians at the moment in hospital. If you have, uh, if you go to hospital because you've slipped on some steps um, and you go to hospital, but you approach with the, the broken ribs or whatever it is, but with high blood pressure, high cholesterol, et cetera, et cetera, you've got underlying health risks as well. So they've got to address those and the accident that's just happened. So I'd like to just take a poll now and see if anybody could identify the risks to health that they have. And considering 96% of us have got one risk to health, um, you need to choose one. So some people in the room today have got high cholesterol. Some people have got high blood pressure. Some people are carrying excess weight. Some people are not eating the right amount of vegetable consumption. Some people, actually, more people are eating the right amount of fruit. That's brilliant. So 60% of people are eating the right amount of fruit. 60% of people are physically inactive. Um, nobody's got risky alcohol consumption, which is great, and nobody's a smoker. And then there's, I've put sleep patterns in there too. So 60% of people um, have got poor sleep patterns. So you can see even just in a small group like this, we've all chosen one pretty much. So if we end up in the hospital, then we are, um, have a underlying health issue, including what we're, um, what we're there for. So if we look at sugary drinks and processed food, the types of um, health effects that they have on our body are the same sort of panel that we just saw of the risks that we've got to health. So if you've got high blood pressure, eating fresh fruit and vegetables will reduce that. If you've got high cholesterol, eating fresh fruit and vegetables and exercise will reduce that. Remember that old saying, an apple a day keeps the doctor away? Well, there is actually research study that says two apple, apples will reduce your blood, your cholesterol levels by 10%. Um, heart disease, cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes, strokes, weight gain, obesity, kidney disease, liver disease and cancer. Those are the cause and effect of processed food and sugary drinks. So why do we eat processed food and sugary drinks? Why do we do that? Well, it's not easy. We need to take our rose-coloured glasses off and understand the stuff on the front of the packet is just marketing. It's not actually the truth. And even the stuff on the back of the packet is just what they legally have to disclose. So you have a couple of choices to make. You can continue to eat processed foods um, without ramping up your food literacy to see what's in it. 
and then hand yourself over to Nurse Hatchett. You can hand yourself over to the medical industry. So you have high blood pressure, high cholesterol, you just give yourself to the medical industry and they give you medication for it. Or you can try, test it yourself in the next six months, rapidly change your fruit and vegetable consumption and exercise and see if your blood pressure and your cholesterol and your weight and your BMI changes. There are also all sorts of apps that you can use to just check out what's inside the food. And I don't really want you to do this. I don't want you to walk around a supermarket with an app and take a product off the shelf and do the research, right? I'm just going to show you some quick things here. What I do want you to do is take the product off the shelf, just turn it around. If it's got lots of stuff that you're going to recognize in a minute, pop it back on the shelf, get your steps up and wander over to the fresh produce section of the supermarket. There's two quite good apps. One's called Init. You just basically scan the barcode and it will say excellent or mediocre or bad um, or the Chemical Maze app. The Chemical Maze app delves in a little bit deeper and I'm going to use that one. So let's have a biscuit, right? We're having a cup of tea. Let's just have a, an Oreo. What's wrong with that? So Oreo ingredients are uh, flour, sugar, oil just um, and cocoa and glucose syrup which is sugar some raising agents emulsifier which is soy if I ask people how much soy do you uh, consume most people will say oh, I don't have a soy latte but soy is in every processed packet of food basically and then there's some numbers so does anybody want to unmute themselves and tell me what those numbers are do you know what they are it's a sort of irreversible question. No, we don't know what those numbers are. We don't know whether they're good or bad, but we're just going to eat the Oreo. So I'm just going to look at one of those numbers, and that's 319. So 319, can somebody, maybe Anthony, unmute yourself and pronounce the name? Turt, can you pronounce that name? Bertil Hydroquinone. Sorry, Bertil Hydroquinone. Yeah, that sounds good. That sounds better than how I would pronounce it, that's for sure. So there's straight away, there's an ingredient in a product that we can't even pronounce, but we're going to eat it. This uh, product is um, petroleum derived. It is has effects on our body, um, acute neurotoxic effects on animal testing that they had. Um, it can also cause dermatitis. It is recommended to be avoided. It's associated with, in humans, birth defects, maybe carcinogenic in high doses. And carcinogenic means cancer-causing. It's prohibited in food for infants. Now, this is one of the things that annoys me. How on earth would you know that that is not allowed? So prohibited must mean um, illegal to give to infants. So an infant in Australia is up to four years old. So have you seen a three-year-old eat an Oreo? I have. So, you, you know, I want the police to run into that playground and say, oh, I'm going to arrest the parents for feeding them that Oreo because it's prohibited and food for infants. But nobody knows it. It's just 319. What on earth is 319? And you can see that it's petroleum-based. So that's made me thirsty. So now I'm going to have a sugary drink, but it's okay because this one says it's got no sugar. It's interesting because when I have this sugary drink, similar to the Oreos, Nurse Hatchet is standing right there ready to help. So here's the ingredients in a sugary drink. This particular sugary drink, carbonated water, some colour, some food acids, some sweeteners, two sweeteners. So it's got no sugar, but it's got two sweeteners and some flavour, and there's a whole different discussion to have on flavour. Natural flavour is another great discussion to have one day, and caffeine. So this particular product is 200 times sweeter than sugar, and it is best avoided. It is prohibited in food for infants. It is reported to, it's been done, um, animal tests have been done, and it has caused tumour. Uh, leukemia and chronic respiratory disease in those animal studies. It is also um, uh, not, um, it is derived from, sorry, I'm just 
It is also in um, other medicines as well. It is used in over um, this particular product, 951, I think I've moved on to 951 now. Um, this particular product is in over 5,000 food products, um, but it is 200 times sweeter than sugar. So we're taking sugar out of the drink and we've added two sweeteners and one of them is 200 times sweeter than sugar. It's best avoided. It's not allowed for infants. The animal testing has caused problems as well. It's a synthetic problem, a synthetic problem, uh, product. Um, it also, for us, the animal tests were cancer, leukemia on animals, but on us, it causes depression, um, asthma, behavioral problems, headaches, migraines, hyperactivity, et cetera, et cetera, learning difficulties and sleep disturbance. So this made me hungry. Let's just have a quick snack. So Arnott's uh, uh, shapes and the one that we're going to have a look at is uh, the barbecue shapes. And it's got a number in there called three, uh, 635, which is wheat, uh, wheat flour, oil, salt, tomato powder, yeast, garlic, parsley, sugar. So that's a, a um, savoury snack, but it's got two lots of sugar in it. You'll see there's a, um, another sugar down there called maize. So let's look at the 635 product. It's actually banned in some countries. So some countries, northern European countries, you're not allowed to put this particular product uh, ingredient in your product. It's animal derived. It's best avoided. It causes allergic reactions, et cetera, et cetera. So that's just a couple of products to look at. So it's not going to be easy to change the world and it's not going to be easy to get ourselves healthier. Clearly, um, the food industry is not really uh, focused on us having healthy products. They're focusing on the front of the packet saying that it's a healthy product, you know, saying that it's gluten-free or um, it's 96% sugar-free or whatever, whatever, or no sugar. Um, so the food industry isn't going to help. So I got a little bit annoyed about all the products that I see, all the packaged products that I see that have got um, ingredients in them that are prohibited for children. So I wrote a letter to our Prime Minister, Scott Morrison, and six weeks later, the aged care minister wrote back to me. I do not know why the aged care minister wrote back. But anyway, um, and said that the, uh, there's codes required for processed foods and it requires that ingredient information and a nutritional information panel is on most foods, which assists us consumers to make an informed choice about what is in the food we are purchasing and how it compares with other products. Well, that's not really true because we aren't informed. Those numbers, 319, 950, 951, 635, we don't know that they're banned in other countries or you're not allowed to give them to children. So the government's not helping. The food industry's not helping and the government's not helping. So I want you to have a, um, a break for a second and run to your pantry and get something out of it and run back. So you'll get a couple of steps up, run to your pantry, get a, something that's packaged and um, bring it back and let's have a look at it. Uh, Louise and Cara, do you have a number on your product? Yep. I've got a, I've got a 551. 551, let's just try that one first. What's the product? Anti-caking agent, apparently. Okay. And it's, and noodles. it's chicken noodles. Chicken noodles. All right, we all know chicken noodles. That's a great one. Thank you for that. So it's silicon dioxide amorphous. Now, it's probably not how you pronounce it. It gives a smiley face to say that it's safe and maybe beneficial. However, no weight. Um, it's prohibited in food for infants. So you cannot give that to somebody under the age of four. Um, it is also in lip gloss and sunscreen and it is mineral derived. Any other numbers? Oh, well, you go out. Have you got any numbers? I've got these seaweed things 
And there's no numbers, okay. so I'm safe with those. Okay, okay. does it say natural flavours? And Scotty, does yours say natural flavours? No. Um, yeah, mine's got a whole load of numbers, and I put one through on the chat. But at the bottom, which is confusing me, it says no artificial colours or flavours. But there's yeah. at least one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve numbers. Yeah. Okay, so 307 is one of the numbers. Yeah, 307B. Okay. It is genetically modified. It's produced by chemical synthesis. It is um, it is permitted for children. Um, it also has effects on the body, nutritional depletion and, and malabsorption. How many numbers should we be concerned about? Pretty much, if it's got a number on it, and you don't need to delve in as deep as what I do, but if the product's got a number on it and got lots of ingredients on it, like Wendy's is saying, um, put it back and go walk to the fresh produce section and get something fresh. The, um, the term natural flavours is a really interesting one as well, and that's a, a myth, and if you felt like it, you could always... Um, research this on uh, google this and have a look the term natural flavors means that somewhere along the line there has been um, a small plant ingredient or animal ingredient and then it has been highly processed containing lots of chemical additives and from a health and safety point of view it is best avoided to have something that's got natural flavors in it so can you see that we've got a problem? <laughs> um, we don't have food literacy. We don't understand what's in, in the ingredients and no one's helping us. The food industry is not helping us. The um, our gov local government's not helping us. Some Northern European governments are helping because they're banning particular products, but, you know, not here. So it looks like it could be just down to us to change what we're eating and change our behaviour. And some of the immediate changes that we could make is we could eat two pieces of fresh fruit. And congratulations to Wendy because she's already done that today. Um, then five serves of fresh vegetables. And I ran a session a week ago and somebody actually genuinely asked me, what's five vegetables? Okay, so if you don't know, if you struggle with how you could eat five serves of fresh vegetables, I have an Instagram page and I'll show you the link to it. I'm not trying to get more followers on Instagram, but it's just a colourful page that shows you what five vegetables looks like. It is it is easy, but in the global culture that we're in now, it isn't. It's all been left behind. It's all processed ingredients. Get the correct portion size of food. So a piece of steak would be this size. Um, a piece of fish would be this size. So when you have a piece of steak out at a restaurant, it's this size, which is like four days worth of protein, not one evening meal worth of protein. Do 30 minutes of exercise and ramp up your steps and drink more water. Now, I'm just going to go back to this particular slide here. I went, it is a global problem, and in uh, November last year, I paid a lot of money to attend a forum. It was a digital forum because of COVID called the Global Food Forum, and I was really excited because it was a global food forum, so I thought it was going to be about food. The opening speaker was a cardboard box manufacturer, billionaire. The next speaker was uh, Coca-Cola. The next speaker was Domino's Pizza, who talked about their share price on the NASDAQ. And the next speaker was Arnott's. So I logged off. It's not food. It's all fake ingredients, synthetic ingredients, um, things that are, aren't any good for us. And that's what we call a global food uh, forum. So that's pretty much a wrap up. If you can't do the... Um, two pieces of fruit and five serves of vegetables and 10,000 steps a day, maybe go to my website and just download this fridge banner and get your family to 
do it with you. I'm doing a, um, a accountability buddy challenge with a girlfriend at the moment. She wants to get 5,000 steps a day. And I've been doing this for a while, so I'm already past the 10,000 steps. But we have to send one another a photograph each day of our step count. And um, she's nailing it because of that competition. So if you want to download that, go to my website. Um, it's eraw.com.au. And go to the courses page and you'll get that fridge banner. Also, if you wanted to challenge with me and send me a photograph um, every day of a healthy lunch that you're having, I won't make a comment on it, but just send me a photograph every day. Do that via LinkedIn and um, in the direct messages and um, I'll be praising you. And that's, that's sort of it. If anybody has any questions, they're most welcome to unmute themselves and ask. Just while the others are unmuting, I, I found it interesting about the antioxidants because they're supposedly good for you but you know antioxidants was the dressage for that first chemical you went through was it 139 or something i mean i've got no idea of the numbers um but i would have thought antioxidants were good for you yeah well and that's the whole thing about food literacy we we th we look at um in australia we've got a health star rating right so the product will have all these stars on it so it could be a four star rating and you think and that's all you do, just look at that. But that star rating system is crap food category. This has got a three-star rating and a crap food category. So if it was all um, at snacks, for example, they could have a star rating in that category. It's not a star rating in health. It's a star rating in that category. So we need to ramp up our food literacy. But I don't want you to do that. I don't want you to overthink it. Just leave the product on the shelf. Somebody else will buy it. These companies won't go out of, out of um, business. Um, but you leave it behind and go over to the fresh produce section. So one last one as we open up to everyone else. Is the rule of thumb, if it's got numbers, it's no good? Or is that too general? Well, pretty much all the numbers not all of them are going to be nasty numbers, but even the ones that are okay will be genetically modified, will be palm oil, will be, you know, the chemical synthetic products. If you want to put synthetic things in, inside your body, fine. But if you did identify as having one of those health risks, if you end up in the hospital, um, you've got underlying health risks. So it's far better to eat healthy food and fresh, real produce. All right now, I think uh, was it Louise or Cara had a question? Yeah, I was. Uh, thanks, thank you, Linda, for the presentation. Uh, the one thing I'm going to take away from this is um, looking at a product and seeing a number on it, putting it down on the shelf, and going to the fresh produce. That's you know, err on the side of caution. As soon as I see a number, put it down instead of faffing about looking for one that doesn't have a number. Just go to fresh produce because you know that's a guarantee. So thank you. Absolutely. And have a little narrative in your mindset. Oh, this is cool. I'm getting my steps up. <laughs> um, Linda, I've got a question as well. Um, yeah. Just is there a website that you recommend for finding out about these e-numbers and things? Because um, I probably will have a bit of a look at what, what we've been consuming. I, you showed up the thing and it had like a red header or I mean, I can Google like anyone else. But is, is there a source you recommend? Yeah, Chemical Maze app, if you, and Wendy, you've, you've got that sort of level of brains um, and you do delve in deep to things. So the Chemical Maze app would probably suit you. It's, uh, I think it's about $12. Yeah. Um, uh, the other one in it um, is uh, free, I think. And it just scans the barcode and says yes or no. However, I scanned, I scanned the barcode of an organic packet of frozen mangoes and it said excellent. But I live in a country that grows mangoes. Those mangoes in that organic packet were mm. produ uh, produced in Peru and packaged in China and shipped to Australia. So for me, that's not excellent, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Thanks, thanks for that, Linda. I, um, I opened my drawers before to get a pen out and um, my wife bought these last night, chocolate bullets. Um, yeah. But as I opened my drawer, what would Linda say? That's, that's what comes in my head. What would, so I just close the drawer. Yeah, close the drawer. And yeah, and they've got 
numbers in them, chocolate bullets, and we're approaching Easter. So don't don't overthink it. Like you don't need to, <laughs> you know, change the world. I'm going to change the world and I'd like you to come with me, Andrew. But um, it is going to be Easter. I'm going to eat chocolate too, you know, so... But just I'd secretly just amount. cover the number just on one packet just to say I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I'll message you. I do I'll have a question. Re- I'll research, I a question, I'll research what's actually in it and I'll message you, Andrew. Okay, thanks. Um, with the steak before, you said, um, you know, generally one piece. Um, but if you've got like the big one, it's usually like could be like four days worth of protein. What can too much protein do to you? you have too much. Yep. Too much protein won't 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 matter, but um, there's fat in all of those ingredients as well, so it's okay. too much fat. That's yeah, and okay. like same with my partner, he'll buy a piece of steak this big, or go to a uh, go to a because a really nice restaurant we go to once a month um, over here, and you know the steak is like that big, and he'll just say, "I'm eating this, and I'm not making eye contact with you, Linda." Fine. <laughs> yeah. Which yeah, does raise right. it. Does raise a question: Is is in moderation okay? If you don't, if you didn't tick any of those health um, underlying health issues, then you're doing okay. Somebody like you, um, Scotty, who's a surfer, um, you know, it's probably okay. But because um, you're physically very physically active, you know, um, but the minute we stop being physically active, it will ramp up. You know, it, it's funny you say that. I, I um. Went and got a heart check recently because I had a cholesterol of six. So I went and got a um, CT scan done on my heart for any um, calcium buildups or anything else. I had a heart. I got a heart of a less than 35 year old. I went and had my lungs checked so I could be a diver and they gave me a report card of less than a 35 year old as well. But I've still got a cholesterol of six and I go, actually all my family's always had high cholesterol. Is it genetic? Is it me? Is it just my makeup? It's like some people are solid and some people are skinny you know, because of their, their background. So what's your take on on that? I mean, I'd like to have a lower cholesterol, but actually I think ever since I've been tested, I've always had a higher cholesterol than what's considered normal. Well, my take on is either hand yourself over to the medical industry or test some things. And you're a research-minded person, Scotty. Test yourself. Give you a month, get tested, get the number, and then eat two apples every single day and then get tested and see if it's helped. Yeah, you know? they say Brazil nuts are really good. And I've been meaning to get tested again, but I haven't been tested now since last year. I get tested every year for everything. I figure if I work this hard, I might as well try and live a bit longer, right? <laughs> well, Brazil nuts are actually good for men for um, uh, a particular cancer that men get as well. So two Brazil nuts a day is actually healthy for men to have uh, for a particular cancer that can happen. What if you have four? Knock yourself out. <laughs> the um the way to have the right amount of the way right amount of, of nuts is actually a lot smaller than what we think and I never ever achieve the right amount but when you put your um nuts in your hand if they start to roll into your fingers it's too many it should be just here but I eat four times as much much that's as why, that. that's why Brazil nuts there's only two of them because you put them in your hand they fill your palm <laughs> that's right that's but right. I do make a palm that's- full of of um, Brazil nuts and sultanas and uh, cashews, just little, and that fills me up as a, as a lunchtime yeah. snack. The um, other thing that you just mentioned, um, actually, I think Andrew wants to unmute. Uh, the other thing that you mentioned as well as sometimes the high cholesterol and high blood pressure, they call it hereditary. And some of it, a small proportion of it is hereditary, but it could be hereditary because your family didn't eat healthy food and didn't exercise. So that's why it's hereditary. I'm dealing with an organisation at the moment and their office is upstairs and their um, supervisor coordinator who looks after 30 of their staff, she now can't climb upstairs and she's morbidly obese. And, um, you know, she said, oh, it's my family, but all of her family is morbidly obese as well. So a great way... either hand yourself over to Nurse Hatchett, who is overwhelmed with people at the moment. She's even got politicians at the moment. Or make some changes and do your own research and see if you're getting better. Um, As we start to wrap up, if anyone's got any more questions, what's your your two tips for everyone, your two standard tips in like a a one-minute review? 
My absolute goal is you eat two pieces of fruit, five serves of vegetables and do 10,000 steps a day. That's it. I'm happy with that. Real simple formula, right? Yep. Only three things to remember. Yep. Can you tell my kids that, Linda? If you put the fridge banner on your fridge, Andrew, they'll hold you to account. Okay. Let's... They'll say, why didn't you tick that? I'll give that a go. I'll print it out. Great. Uh, okay, anyone else you, got any more Anyone else want to raise their hand? No. No. I I find the whole I find the whole labeling thing fascinating from from two sides of it. One is obviously I'll call it fake marketing and advertising. You know, look, I'm a big fan of marketing and advertising because it works. But when I look at it on packets, I go oh, wow, these guys are super smart, right? They really suck us in with some false advertising, some false positives, which is, you know, like I said, I like the psychology behind it too because then you're going to go, okay, well, and, and not only in a health perspective, learn to read between the lines of the labels on food, but it's the same with everything else. You know, so what are they really trying to say when they say it's 97 cent fat free? What are they really trying to say? And what, are, what else is there? And that's why I like the psychology behind it. So... Uh, and even though we're aware of it, I, I learned a few new things today, especially around those numbers. And I always took for granted the numbers. But the second thing I learned today was how they fake market the numbers too. Now, it might be true that it's an antioxidant, but I would have looked at antioxidants and thought, oh, okay, well, it's an antioxidant, but it's okay. It's like vitamin C. It's like, should be good for me. So interestingly enough, they, they actually dress up what they have to put in there as well. And maybe it's true. Maybe it is an antioxidant. And, uh, but us lay people just don't know we just trust. No. We trust. Yeah, and the, the government doesn't mind us not knowing because that letter that I wrote and then the aged care minister <laughs> writing back to me and saying, oh, no. And they even said that, you know, 950 was totally fine. Okay. Mm. So it's, it's nobody's coming. It's up to us. We need to make the change. And I need everybody here to make the change so then we can do it all through Australia and Wendy's in New Zealand and you know I'm dealing with people in Switzerland so slowly 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 we can go you know globally well that was an excellent session I was looking forward to that one uh if no one else has got any more questions stick your hand up otherwise uh, we'll roll that was excellent I was very very happy that'll be a good replay that one thank you Scotty. Linda, thank I mean, you everybody uh, for attending well, all right, everyone. We'll see you all in the next one Thanks, next Linda. week. Check out what's live on System 1357 Live. There's constant workshops coming up. The International Women's Day events were so good. They were excellent both here in America. We ran these live workshops, but they weren't workshops. They were panels. They were so good. And we've got a whole array of things coming up next around even video content online. And anyway, so keep an eye on it. System 1357 Live. And uh, there's something for everybody in there. And if you can't come, go check out the replays. The replays are going live as we speak. I put up two more replays, one with actually Ron Craig around cybersecurity. And we ran that workshop. And a couple of days later, a friend of mine had $10,000 taken out of his bank account. And I said, you should have come to the workshop. <laughs> I tell everyone they're there, you should have come because you would have recognized it quicker. Anyway, I think he's actually going to get it back because he caught it as it happened. And he didn't manage to leave it. But long story short is there's some awesome information there for everyone to learn from. And it's very diverse from nutrition like you've got to cybersecurity to sales and marketing to all sorts of things that will help you achieve your goals. Well, everyone, thanks for coming. And we'll see you all in the next one. Okay. Thank you, Linda.